and today what I'm going to look at is I'm going to go over the lessons on humans and sustainability so what you want to do is open up canvas and go through and find basically under the modules you go down and you open up the notes for humans and sustainability so the notes that I've written are all about humans and sustainability and what it's sta stating is that our existence lifestyles and economies depend upon the Sun and the earth in terms of solar capital and also natural capital solar capital this is the energy from the Sun and it provides 99% of the energy used on earth so in the form of like trees that have over time died off and over millions of years been created into coal gas and some of these fossil fuels that's some of the energy we use the other one percent may be say from the wind or even from geothermal energy things like uh, energy from the earth below the heat from the earth and then we have natural capital and what natural capital is this is what the earth gives us to um, support our lifestyles our economies okay and our very very existence so na natural capital some of the things that can be included in natural capital things like air resources and the system of purification so the earth gives us air which is 78% nitrogen 21% oxygen and you have 1% trace gases things like argon and the system of purification air is purified through basically the action of plants absorbing some of the pollutants and giving out things like oxygen also it can be purified by things like the rain or the oceans absorbing some of the pollutants the earth also gives us water and a system of purification that purification system uh, is through it can be like water can be purified through th things like you have water passing through rocks or it may be through like the hydrologic cycle and if you think of the hydrologic cycle this is basically where you have solar energy driving um, a system whereby pollutants are left behind in the ocean so you have for example the Sun beating down on the ocean and as the Sun beats down on the ocean you get evaporation it's just like a saucepan with salt if you boiled it dry what would be left behind would be salt so this water evaporates goes up into the clouds moves on land in a, by a process known as advection and then comes back down to ground level in the form of precipitation snow could be sleet rain etc etc then you have that water passing back either via um, the soils and passing back down towards the oceans or over the surface in the form of different forms of runoff um, you have for example you have rills gullies you have streams you have rivers all eventually finding their way back to the ocean you have an, one other system at work with regards to water you have water which is drawn up via plants and released via the leaves on hot days this is called evapotranspiration okay and another thing that the earth gives us is soil and it, if I usually ask students what soil is it's I don't usually get a very sort of like comprehensive answer but basically soil is a combination of organic matter and rocks that have broken down and what drives this is what's known as the rock cycle okay and you can see the diagram relating to this rock cycle and given the various types of rocks you've got sedimentary rocks formed in sed uh, formed in different layers you have igneous rocks which have been formed either inside the earth or um, have been extruded via sort of like volcanic activity and you have metamorphic rocks which are basically formed from um, a very either high intense intense heat or in extreme pressure or both an example um, of an igneous uh, of a metamorphic rock is where you have things like um, you have limestone which has been metamorphosized and it, it creates things like marble 
Okay, so you've got the rock cycle and you've got organic matter which is decaying and then it's mixed by animal actions like worms and things to form over time. You get um, different types of soils. We also have a system of waste removal. So the, the earth can decompose things or it can reduce concentration. For example, um, air pollution can be um, reduced in its concentration by releasing it into the atmosphere. For this reason, we wouldn't actually run an automobile in a gar garage, sorry, um, because with the door shut, it would produce gases which are toxic and, you know, extremely harmful. So you can reduce concentration, or it may be that the concentration is reduced due to water. And we, this waste may also decompose over time. Okay. The earth also gives us things like natural pest and disease control. You know, you have predator prey, disease control through things like climate. And the earth also gives us biodiversity from the word bio, bio meaning life, the diversity of life, all plants and animals. Okay. The earth also gives us a system of climate control. And there's two major processes. The first is, is termed the greenhouse effect. And the greenhouse effect, what we can say with regards to the greenhouse effect, this is basically where you have um, uh, rays from the sun coming down to, the, uh, to ground level, warming up the surface of the earth, and then that heat getting trapped close to the earth's surface. And in this way, we're not a revolving ice block. It's very like if you keep the car windows shut in the summer, when you come to open that car later, that car's going to be very, very hot inside. Okay, so the greenhouse effect, it's these sort of like rays from the sun coming down, getting trapped due to various gases. And these gases are called greenhouse gases. Okay. We also have another system is called the ozone shield. Okay. And what the ozone shield is, what the ozone shield is in terms of climate, it's, it's in the second area of the um, second area of the atmosphere called the stratosphere. And what happens is the rays from the sun pass down and they get to the stratosphere and they react with oxygen to produce ozone to prevent vast amounts of ultraviolet radiation from reaching the Earth's surface and allowing life on the Earth's landed surface. Okay, so those are two, two processes with regards to, um, those are two of the processes with regards to climate. So the earth gives us many, many different things to, like I said, to sustain life, our economies, and our lifestyles. So the next, next major component, the next set, set of notes down, is the major environmental problems. What are we doing to those natural resources what problems are we creating? Basically, this lesson, these two lessons, are giving you an overview of the things that we will be looking at during the course. So, the major environmental problems. Factors that affect the environment may cause environmental instability. So we have, we look at different categories. We looked at the earth gives us air and a system of air purification. So, what we're seeing is things like global ch climate change. We're increasing the amounts of various greenhouse gases, things like carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, also um, chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs. And this is leading to an increase in the warming of the Earth's surface. It's like having an extra blanket on a bed. It's trapping more heat. We're also seeing in the second area of the atmosphere with the stratosphere, where we had um, ozone to stop the ultraviolet radiation from reaching the Earth, we're seeing a depletion of this ozone. This is being caused by things like um, CFCs from things like aerosols or refrigerators or air conditioning systems being released and stopping a reaction, a, what's termed a photochemical reaction between oxygen and creating um, ozone. So it, 
it's stopping that reaction. So by that reaction not occurring, it's allowing ultraviolet radiation to pass through. We're also seeing increased levels of urban air pollution. This includes things like photochemical smog, and we'll look at this when we look at air pollution. So photochemical smog, which is basically high levels of ozone in the troposphere or the lowest part of the atmosphere. This cause think, causes things like burning eyes or difficulty in breathing. We're also seeing things like increased levels of industrial um, smog. This is mainly found in places like um, the places that are industrializing or are major um, producers of industrial goods at the moment. We in the developed economically developed world don't see so much industrial grey air smog. We're also seeing things like acid deposition. We're building tall chimneys to remove things like nitrous oxide and sulfur dioxide, which is released into the atmosphere and comes down um, downwind to produce uh, sulfuric acid and nitric acid. We're also seeing various levels of indoor air, uh, indoor air pollution. Certain things around the home, if you think, we've got things like radon, we've got things like lead within the homes. Um, there's many, many different areas that we're seeing. In addition, we're also seeing things like habitat de depletion. Um, uh, biodiversity depletion, we're losing our diversity of life. Habitat destruction, habitat de degradation, and increased levels of extinction. Okay. Another major environmental problem we're facing is water pollution. Increased levels of toxic chemicals in our waters. Nutrient overload from the greater use of various sort of um, fertilizers on agricultural land and industrialized agriculture. More toxic chemicals going into our water. Oxygen depletion. Greater levels of pesticides as, as we use more pesticides on our lands. Greater levels of oil spills as Basically, what we're seeing with those oil spills, you know, where's our oil coming from? Is there more likelihood of an accident? Or excessive heat as temperatures increase, the oceans are getting warmer, the water is expanding. We're also seeing a greater level of waste production. We are basically using products, um, the product life cycle of many products has shortened, so we keep things a short time. Think about all the products we have today, as opposed to what people had in, say, the 1950s. We use things and replace them much, much more rapidly. An example, may, for example, could be, what about a telephone? If your telephone went wrong in the 1950s, what would you do? You would buy, uh, you'd probably get someone in to repair it. Nowadays, what's the point? You'd go out and you'd buy a new one. We also have, in the world, things like, Food supply problems, problems of overgrazing, okay, because often, you know, in certain areas, uh, populations are increasing, so we're seeing an increased level of overgrazing, farmland loss as we expand into the farmlands, wetland loss, overfishing, we're fishing, it's not traditional fishing anymore, it's more industrialized fishing, more coastal pollution. Also, great levels of water shortages, loss of biodiversity, but also poor nutrition. Think about what are we eating? As they say, we are what we eat, but we also, we are what we eat, eats. I will continue this on the next video. I'm going to start to look at sustainability. Okay, so all these things are going to be part of, so of your first test. So you need to understand some of these things.